By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are playing a game of X points right here on Timmy Talks. And I'm playing against brand new patron Tim. I mean, that's a perfect name, Tim. Uh, thank you so much for becoming a patron. And uh, you've asked me to play a game of X points, so that is exactly what we're going to do. Here you can see the points list, by the way, for X points, because uh, this old school format works according to a points list. You can spend 10 points in total on cards with points allocated to them. So that means that you've got to be kind of creative when you're brewing your deck. Now, um, I believe Tim is building or playing a black and green deck. I mean, I think it's pretty good. I wonder how many him to Turex he's gonna play. And he is taking on my mono blue deck and I'm quite excited about this deck because it is truly a merfolk deck. I'm playing Sea Singer. I'm playing Voldalian Knights, right? I'm playing um, the River Merfolk. What's his name again? With Mountain Walk. So I'm just, this is really a Merfolk deck, right? It's not just, oh, I'm playing Lord of Atlantis and uh, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, it's Merfolk. No, no, this is Merfolk Merfolk, if you know what I mean. So I'm really looking forward to show you these decks. Um, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, by the way. But before I start with the deck deck, first a quick message from our great sponsor, 3 for one Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to dive into the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Tim. It's called Dangerous Degoba. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Tim. So it's green and black and it's called Dangerous Dagoba. And maybe you're wondering what is Dagoba? Well, let me enlighten you. Dagoba is the home uh, of Yoda for his final years. And the planet got really famous in the Star Wars movie where Luke Skywalker gets his training on Dagoba. And Dagoba is basically one big bayou. So it's really a fitting name for this deck because this deck, of course, is a black and green deck and, and plays a full playset of bayous. And uh, let's let's just have a look here. Maybe first discuss what this deck wants to do. Uh, to do. Because I think this deck wants to do what most black green decks are known for. And that is two things. Ramping up, discarding. Well, actually three things. Ramping up, discarding, and land destruction. That's all in this deck. And then, of course, combined with some very powerful creatures. So let's kind of start with the ramp. He's playing with four Elves of Deep Shadow. Now, Elves of Deep Shadow, one green to cast. Tap it for a black mana. You do take a damage, but, I mean, who cares? So Elves of Deep Shadow is ideal to kind of ramp out those uh, hypnotic specters early and also in this deck there's no double green so there is double black so it makes sense here to play elves of deep shadow over lanawar elves uh, for example because if you've got the green mana to cast the elves of deep shadow you usually need maybe that extra black mana to do a turn to um, sinkhole hypnotic specter or maybe even a royal assassin because there are two cool royal assassins in here but, um, you know, the Elves of Deep Shadow, that's the ramp part of the deck. And then we have the land destruction part of the deck. And that's where we have two Ice Storms and three Sinkholes. So five land destruction spells in total. Again, together with Elves of Deep Shadow, you can play that out early. So like in an ideal situation, you're going to have turn one Elves of Deep Shadow. Turn two, you're going to destroy a land of the opponent. And that means that you've got a, a mana more to spend and your opponent has a mana less. So that's a huge tempo swing. Now, the best follow-up play from that point forward, in my opinion, is to drop that Hypnotic Spectre because Hypnotic Spectre is going to attack the hand, it's going to force your opponent to discard, and once you know, you're know you discarding to the Hypnotic Spectre, things go bad really, really fast, and then Tim almost has a guaranteed win, I think. Um, talking about discard, he's also playing with three him to Turex. Now, remember, him to Turex is a card with two points allocated to it, so it's kind of hard to play a full... Uh, play set in the X points format. That's probably the reason why he's playing three and uh, not four. Then he's also playing with some bigger creatures in the deck in the form of three uh, Urnum Jins and of course a Juzam Jin. And I have to say, Tim, I'm kind of jealous at the Juzam Jin. Oh, and before I forget, you also have a beautiful Sangir Vampire there. It's kind of hidden, but it is there under the Hypnotic Spectre. Um, but like I said, I'm kind of jealous at your Juzam Jin because 
I don't own a Jusum Jin. It's been on my list forever, but oh boy, those uh, those creatures sure have um, become expensive. So yeah, I just gotta gotta save up, and I have to also be honest. My my old school wants list is is really really long. Um, and then looking at the rest of the deck, there are a few cards that I want to highlight because I love them so much. I think it's so cool that you're playing them. The first two cards I want to highlight are the two Royal Assassins. I think it's super cool you're playing Royal. Royal, a 1-1 creature for 2 black and 1. You can tap it to destroy target tapped creature. This card works really well with Icy Manipulator. That's one of the original combos in uh, Magic the Gathering. So it's really cool to see that you're playing that. And you're also playing with another card I really like. And that reminds me of the early days of Timmy. Uh, and that is Raise Dead. So Raise Dead is a sorcery for 1 black that simply says return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So I think Raise Dead is a little bit... Um, neglected because of the fact that in old school you have to deal with swords to plowshare so often and swords of course removes a card from the game so removes the creature from the game so you cannot get it back with raised dead i think if swords to plowshares would just say you know destroy you cannot regenerate um you, you would see raised that more i think but the, yeah, let me know in the comments how you how you feel about it maybe you think no it, it wouldn't have had any influence on it at all anyway um those are the cards I wanted to highlight. I think the deck is looking very solid, very, very strong. Now let's take a look uh, at my deck, the Merfolks. And here we see my deck, a mono blue, a Merfolks. Now I'm really excited about this deck because I've decided to just add a lot of Merfolks, take out all the other creatures. I'm not playing Surrender Perfreed. I'm not playing Flying Man. I'm like, no, I'm going to play Merfolk. I got to do this right. So what I've decided to do was, of course, go for, for Lord of Atlantis's four Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. I also decided to add four uh, River Merfolks. I think in the introduction, I was uh, wondering what the name was. Well, the name of River Merfolk is River Merfolk. <laughs> that kind of makes sense. Um, I'm liking River Merfolk, by the way. Two blue to cast, a 2-1 creature that you can give Mountain Walk. And of course, when you have your Lord of Atlantis out, it also has Island Walk. So that makes it kind of versatile. Also a big fan of the art of, uh, of River Merfolk. And maybe talking about art, there is a card that I actually love even more art-wise. And that is Voldalian Knights. I mean, look at it. Isn't that just beautiful art by Susan Van Camp? Now this card, it's, it's, it's what you have a lot in uh, Fallen Empires. If you only read the start of a card, a lot of these cards are actually decent. So this card is 2 blue and 1 for a 2-2 two, two blue creature, a merfolk with first strike. Right, so it's kind of the blue, um, white knight and black knight, the blue version. Um, and then if you pay a blue, it gets flying until end of turn. So if it would just stop there, the card would be really, really good. Unfortunately, it has this drawback that says it cannot attack unless defending player controls an island. And to make matters even worse, when you control no islands, you got to sacrifice the knights. And, you know, that is super annoying. Sea Singer has kind of the same clause, right? With Sea Singer, I'm playing a single Sea Singer. You can only use the Sea Singer if your opponent controls islands. Um, and it, it it's just annoying. You know, I, I, I wish they wouldn't have done that. It, it makes a flavor sense. But, I mean, a lot of other cards don't have that drawback. I feel like they're, they're, they're punishing blue here a little bit too much with all those creatures that, uh, you know, get buried when you have no islands. Think of Island Fish Jasconicus. Um, you know, think of pirate ship. There's just too many cards that have that, and I feel it's it's almost exclusive to the blue creatures. You know, that doesn't seem fair to me. I guess you know, blue is a pretty strong color. I get it, but but still, uh, hopefully, I'm not going to run into a tsunami today because that would be pretty devastating. Um, so, just to make a long story short, I need my opponent to have islands. So therefore, I'm playing four phantasmal terrains. I've chosen phantasmal terrain over magical hack for the simple reason that I also want to change the non-basic lands into islands. You know, in old school, you've got a lot of very strong non-basic lands, Maze of If, Library of Alexandria, Mishra's Factory. All those cards can be targeted by a single Phantasmal Terrain. So that's why, of course, I'm, um, I've am i chosen to go Phantasmal Terrain over um, a Magical Hack. And I'm saying, of course, I guess it's not that much of an of course, because Magical Hack has obvious benefits as well. As a matter of fact, let me know in the comments below what would you do in this deck? Would you play maybe two Phantasmal Terrain, two Magical Hacks? Or would you do what I did, go with four Phantasmal Terrains? Or would you go with four uh, uh, Magical Hacks? Let me know in the comments below and, and please explain why you would make that uh, that decision. Now, uh, besides that, I'm also playing with a full playset of Psionic Blasts because this is an aggressive deck, right? So I'm playing Unstable Mutations, Psionic Blasts. I just want to deal a lot of damage really quickly. Um, and I've decided to spend my points on the four Mishra's Factories. They're, I believe they're one point each. 
and on the brain geyser, which is, is that two points or three points? Anyway, um, I haven't spent all the points here, but to be honest, when I was making it, I didn't really have the points list in mind. So I first made the deck and then I checked the points list of X points. I'm like, okay, nice. I've got, I've got points left. Um, anyway, this is the deck. I really, 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 really hope that I can cast full daily and nights and also attack with it. That would, that would make my day. If I can do that, I can lose. I don't mind. Anyway, uh, this is my list. We've looked at the list of Tim and that only means one thing. We are ready to go to the games. Let's go. Game number one. Here we go. So I'm on the play here playing Mono Blue and Merfolks. And uh, looking forward to this. Hopefully I can cast some cool Merfolks like River Merfolk and uh, Fuldalian Knights. Anyway, six in hand, passing the turn to Tim. Tim starting with a Bayou. He's playing black and green. Passing the turn back here. And I've got a, uh, a play, it seems, tapping two blue. Okay, there's River Merfolk. So this is a 2-1 from Fallen Empires. And pay a blue to give it Mountain Walk. Not very relevant, I feel, in this matchup. I don't think uh, Tim is playing with any mountains today. Could, of course, use my Phantasmal Terrain to make a mountain. Anyway, let's see uh, what Tim is going to do. Dropping a forest here. And this is actually good news for me because I'm really afraid for double black because then Tim can start casting him to Turek, a sinkhole. But with one black and one green, I'm not that uh, worried. Look at this. Unstable mutation. 5-4 swinging in. Is it going to be 5 damage here for Tim? Ooh, a terror. Yeah, this is... This is harsh, man. And this is a great answer for Tim, of course. And uh, I didn't really think about the terror option because uh, most players play this card in the sideboards. And here we see Tim, by the way, uh, changing something about his setup. He saw a lot of glare, so it's a little bit dark on his side, but we can still see the card, so that's going to work. He's just going to play a Pendlehaven here, turn three, pass turn. I'm going to take my turn four, playing out an island and just pass. Okay, oh, that's not great. I mean, I want to play Merfolk, you know? I want to have an early aggressive start, and that's really not working here. Tim playing a Forest. Having four, is he going to play an Urnum? He's going to tap four here, playing uh, three Urnum Jins main. Yep, there's the Urnum 4-5 card originally from uh, Arabian Nights. This one is from Chronicles. Tapping four. Do I have a Control Magic? Yes, I do. Wow. That is quite nice. Playing two Control Magics main and a Sea Singer, but of course Sea Singer isn't going to do much unless um, I can use a Phantasmal Terrain and give Tim an Island. Let's see what Tim can do against the Control Magic. I think it's a difficult card for him to deal with. He does have Tranquilities, but I think they're in his sideboard. Anyway, Tim dropping a Forest here, tapping four. Another Urnum Jin. Okay, so at least that can block the stolen Urnum Jin. Now, do remember, Urnum Jin has to give Forest Walk to a creature, so when I get Forest Walk, my Urnum is unblockable. Oh, look at this, Phantasmal Terrain. Gonna play it on the untapped Bayou. That's, of course, his only black source. I'm gonna turn that into a basic island. Yeah, so that's tough. Attacking here with the 4-5. Interesting. Does that mean I've got maybe Psionic Blast in hand? There's the block. There's the Psionic Blast, exactly. That means I'm gonna drop to 18. And it looks like that blue dice is actually not the life total of Tim, but, the, uh, but my life total instead. I think the tiny dice there right next to the blue dice is actually his life total. So I'm going to try to keep track uh, of the life totals here for you. Tim, of course, still being on 20, by the way. I'm on 18 after that Psionic Blast. But Tim is in trouble. I mean, he's got to find an answer to the control magic. Is he, you know, basically being forced here to, uh, to kill his own creature? The good news for Tim at least is that he found another black source in the form of a second bayou. Now do remember that the other bayou is a basic island. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank thinking about his options. Okay, that's a good option. Demonic tutor. Yeah, what can you tutor for? Maybe it, would you go for second terror? Just destroy your own Urnum? Another option could be to go for a Juzum Jin, playing one Juzum Jin main. It's a 5-5, five five, of course. The problem is for, for Tim, he doesn't have double black. I mean, it so depends on what he has in hand. Maybe he's even just going to look up a second black source, you know? What if, what if his hand, he's got four cards in hand still, right? What if his hand is full of, like, Juzum Jin, um, Sinkhole, stuff like that? 
hypnotic specter, you know, and he can't play it out. That's the thing with, with black. Maybe he's got royal assassin in there playing two royals. The thing is, if you play with black, you really have to commit to that color. And actually, Tim does. For example, he's playing with a full playset of uh, Elves of Deep Shadow. But he's, he's just not finding them so far. Elves of Deep Shadow could be another card to look up. The, I, I think the plus with Elves of Deep Shadow is that it, it's a card you can immediately play out. Regrowth could be an option. Regrowth Terror in the next turn, play the Terror on the Urnum. But it's not, you don't want to kill your own Urnum, right? Preferably. Then again, I don't think he's got any answers for, uh, for enchantments. Anyway, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just speculating a lot. We don't know. And it looks like Tim passing the turn here. And uh, I think I'm forgetting to untap my lands here. I'm first attacking for four. So I'm going to put Tim here on 16, playing out of Mishra's Factory. I still need to untap my lands, by the way. Only one card in hand. I guess that's the good news for Tim, right? He's got four cards in hand, five after the draw. I only have one card in hand. But I think that's the only good news for him at the moment because uh, he's looking at another six points of damage if he doesn't do anything. Okay, playing out another Bayou. So perhaps he looked up that second Bayou or the third Bayou actually. But like I said, that one Bayou is now an island. Anyway, he's going to tap two black, I believe. And there's a him to Turek. So that's going to take care. Uh, oh, it's not going to take care of the one card in hand because I actually can play it out because it's a Psionic Blast. So I'm going to drop to 16 and... Uh, Tim here is going to drop to 12 after taking 4 from the Urnum earlier. And now he's going to... Is he going to take another 6? He would drop to 6 after combat. So one card in hand, going to animate. It's looking really bad for Tim here. Going to take another hit of 6. Yeah, just going to take the 6. Going to drop to 6. Oh man, he is so low. He is so incredibly low. Needs an answer. To at least one of the two creatures. Cannot take another hit of six because then he's dead here in game number one. Okay, he's tapping three. There's a royal. So this is really good. The problem is he's going to have to chump with the royal or else he dies. So he needs something else. What can he find? Oh, a strip mine. This is quite good. He can strip my um, Mishra's factory, right? And then take the four damage from the urn and go down to two. It's not ideal because you're on Psionic Blast range, but I think if you're in Tim's position, it's what you have to do. Remember, he's on 6, so doesn't have a lot of outs. I'm still on 16. And I think we're right now talking about the, the dice here. What I sometimes forget is because I play online so often, and of course I record my matches, I always make sure that I have dice that, um, that, is, that clearly shows my life total. But of course, if you, if you don't play online often... Uh, it's it's not so so obvious, and I think this is one of the first times for Tim that he uh, that he plays online. So passes to turn to me. He's on six. Yeah, what can I do? Like if I attack with both, he's gonna strip the factory, take four, drop to two, and next turn kill my Urnum. Gonna tap him blue. It seems. Oh, unstable mutation. This is perfect. Because now I've got a 7-8 uh, to attack, meaning Tim has to chump the Urnum. Probably going to strip the factory, exactly. But this is so bad for Tim. He now has to chump. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. Has to chump the Urnum or else he dies. Has no choice. Remember, he's on 6. And the Urnum is now a 7-8. Uh, yeah, so really bad news for Tim here. And now again, he has to kind of play a blocker to stop the Urnum. He's going to tap a green. Okay, there's the Elves of Deep Shadow card from the dark. A 1-1. One, one. You can tap for one black and take a damage. And here we also see a Hypnotic Spectre. So two blockers on the board. That's not too bad. So going to untap, upkeep, a counter, and draw. So that's a minus one, minus one counter on uh, my creature. Going to turn it sideways, of course. He's still on six, so has to block here. Going to chump with the Elves of Deep Shadow. Second main, gonna tap four. Wow, another control magic. This is very unfortunate for Tim because I'm actually only playing two control magics main. That's it. Following this up, by the way, with a river merfolk. So a two one. And for one blue, you can give it uh, 
mountain walk. I'm getting a deja vu, of course, because I, uh, I already said that at the start of this game was the first creature I played here in game one. Anyway, Tim is going to play a sinkhole on his own. Land, yeah, that is painful. And I mean, is there anything he can do here? He's staring down at three creatures. He's on six. That's it. So game number one here going to the Merfolk army. And I think, you know, in game two, we are probably going to see a lot of Tranquilities coming in from the sideboard. And I think Tranquility is one of the best cards probably together with Tsunami against my deck. So I'm really curious to see how it's going to pan out in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And of course, Tim on the play after losing that first game. Let's see if he can find the right mana. Starting here with the four, tapping it. Okay, he's got to turn one play into Elves of Deep Shadow. I mean, this is good news for Tim. This is what he wants to do. If he can now find a forest or another swamp, he can play a sinkhole or an ice storm. Remember, he's playing with uh, five land destruction spells. Ooh, what's this card called again? It's that, it's that land from Fallen Empire. It comes into play tapped. You can tap it for a black or you can tap and sack it for two black. It's going to attack here with the Elves of Deep Shadow. It's going to put me on 19. And uh, passing the turn to me, I assume. Going to play another blue. And passing the turn. So two blue open. That's always a little bit risky, right? Playing against a blue mage. There's another forest. Are we going to see uh, maybe a turn three earn him? Or the Juzum Jin that's still in his deck. That will be quite cool. It's going to tap out. Going to take a damage. It's going to drop to 19. And okay, there's the earn him. So very early earn him. Can I counter it away? That's the big question. If not, I'm in trouble. Very early in the game. It looks like I'm going to counter. No, I'm going to boomerang here on end step. Okay. Interesting decision. Does it perhaps mean that I've got to control magic in hand and want to buy some time? Going to play a Mishra's Factory. Going to tap two blue. Ooh, there's a Phantasmal Terrain. So again, I can turn his only black source. Well, it's got the, the Elves of Deep Shadow, of course, but his only land that can make black mana. I'm going to turn that into an island. Five cards in hand, passing to turn back here to Tim. I wonder if Tim's just going to recast the Urnum. Why not? Yeah, so he's going to drop to 18. And he's going to recast the Urnum here, passing the turn. So I wonder if I have a Control Magic here. And Control Magic did so much work for me in Game 1. Yep, there's the Control Magic again. Yeah, this has got to be a little bit frustrating for Tim. That I keep having the Control Magic at the right time. And, and here the Boomerang really helped because it saved me 4 points of damage. And it allowed me to steal an untapped Urnum instead of a tapped Urnum. So that's also kind of uh, a plus. I mean, I just hope for Tim he can find a Tranquility, because a Tranquility here would take care of two cards and would give him back uh, his creature. It's going to tap again the Elves, going to drop to 17. It's going to play out a new Urnum. And passing the turn. Let's see what I'm going to draw, and if I'm going to attack again... Do I have another Psionic Blast? That's the question, right? We saw that in game one where I attacked the block with the Urnum and I played the Psionic Blast. Gonna tap two blue here. Okay, there's a River Merfolk again. Gonna tap three. Ooh, a Voldalian Knight. Yeah, this is the card I was hoping to show you in this match. So this is the 2-2 creature. First strike, pay one blue, give it flying. And it can only attack if the opponent has islands. And guess what? The opponent has an island because of that Phantasmal Terrain. So next turn, I can attack with my Knight, fly over his Urnum and his Elf. Oh man, I, I hope my Fudalian Knight lives long enough to do that. So yeah, this is pretty cool. So really happy here with my army. 
And then he's going to give Forest Walk here to my River Merfolk. That's interesting because he could have also given it to my Flyer, right? My Fodalian Knight, but perhaps the card is not that well known. So maybe he doesn't know that I can give it flying. But I'm pretty sure we talked about the card. But I think I would have given Forest Walk here to the Fodalian Knight because I can give it flying anyway. Then it's unblockable. Whereas with the River Merfolk, it's just a 2-1. And, you know, it's not a really good attacker, but now it's got Forest Walk. I can also attack with it, basically deal, you know, four points of damage. And I think here for Tim, by the way, there's no good attack, because if he attacks with the, uh, with the Urnum, I can, I can double block with the Fodalian Knight that has First Strike and uh, the stolen Urnum Jin, killing his Urnum. So there's no real good attack for Tim here. I think if you're Tim, you're just really hoping for... Uh, a Tranquility, or perhaps a Demonic Tutor to look up a Tranquility. If he, of course, boarded it in, but I, I, I guess he did right after our first game. I wonder if he's playing with Tsunami. I'm not quite sure. We'll just have to see. For now, he's on 17. Okay, he's going to tap. He's going to drop to 16. What is he going to play out for a black and a blue? Yeah, there's a terror. Is he going to kill his own Urnum? Yep. I mean, it's bad, but you have to do what you have to do. Now he can swing in with his Urnum, right? Because I no longer have a double block. Exactly going to swing in. You're probably just going to take four points of damage. Exactly dropping to 15. Next turn, though, I can attack him for six because I can also animate my factory. So unless, of course, he has a play here. Another Elves of Deep... No, that wouldn't really matter. I wouldn't say another Elves of Deep, Deep Shadow would help, but... You're not going to chump with it anyway. And here we see Tim, by the way, changing the dice. So it's going to be easier to kind of follow his life total. I believe he's on 16. Exactly. So he's on 16, passing the turn. There we see another factory. Yeah, I'm probably just going to swing in here. I can, I can also pump the other one. So I can deal seven points of damage. Wow, that means he will drop to nine. That's pretty devastating here for Tim. Counting up the damage. Yeah, dropping to nine. Oh, this is tough, Tim. So much pressure. Another full daily and night. Ooh, so next turn I can actually swing in with four damage through the air with the full daily and nights. Unless, of course, he can uh, get rid of that Phantasmal Terrain or of his own land. I mean, he is playing with a lot of land destruction that we haven't seen at all. Three sinkholes, two ice storms. He's on nine. Of course, he cannot play sinkhole out now, by the way, because he only has access to one black with that uh, Elves of Deep Shadow. Yeah, really in the tank here, trying to fight for his survival, tapping, I assume for a black, right? Taking a damage would drop to eight. Gonna tap the island here. There's a demonic. Oh, man. I kind of feel for Tim. It's like he's every time he has to find a solution, every time he's under pressure and... You know, the control magics have been so good for me in this matchup and uh, now playing out of Bayou. So at least he'll have access to double black again next turn. The problem is, is there going to be a next turn? He's now on eight after taking that damage from his own Elves of Deep Shadow. I can attack and he only has one blocker, so needs to play something out or else he's, uh, he's dead again. He's going to shuffle up. And just remember that one counter on the River Merfolk is to um, indicate the Forest Walk that the Merfolk got from the Urnum. Yeah, what can he do here? Needs to do something or else he's dead next turn. The best thing would be Tranquility, killing the Phantasmal Terrain, because then I can no longer attack with, uh, with my two Voldalian uh, Knights. Gonna tap the bayou here, I assume for a black. Pointing towards the phantasmal terrain, what are we gonna see? Ooh, there's a paralyze. 
It's gonna play a paralyzed on the river merfolk. Yeah, and again, like I like I said earlier today, I think, or today, but earlier in this game, I mean, I, I think I would have given Forest Walk to one of the full daily knights because they can fly anyway. And then you could also paralyze perhaps the other uh, full daily knight or the one with Forest Walk, of course. Anyway, deciding to untap the River Merfolk here because it still has Forest Walk, it still has value for me. And I can now swing in for two and of course give flying to my knight, swing in for six in total. Yeah, look at that. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Attacking for six. Let me know in the comments below. When is the last time you saw Fodelian Knights doing this much action? For me, it's definitely a first year on the channel. So uh, Tim dropping here to two. And I'm passing the turn back. And yeah, this is very problematic for Tim. I, I, I don't really see a way out for him. Asking now to Tim who's going to get the forest walk. And now he's changing to the Fodalian Knight. I think that's a very good decision. Again, it's always easy when you're looking back at these games. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've made plenty of mistakes myself. And here's going to tap. It's going to go down to one. You got to do what you got to do. What is he going to cast? Oh, he's going to destroy his own, his, own, uh, his own land here to get rid of the Phantasmal Terrain. I mean, at least now I can no longer attack with the Fodalian Knights, but I think it's too little too late. He's on one, only has one blocker, so I can just attack with my factories and then he dies. But he is going to pass the turn, so maybe there's something in his hand. It looks like I'm going to keep the River Merfolk tapped because I want to animate the factories. Going to draw a card for turn, probably going to animate Swing In. That's it, right? Or does he have a Fog or something that could help him? And no, he doesn't. And that means this is game number two and the match here for the Merfolks. And uh, don't go away yet because we did play a game number three. So uh, stay with us to check out that game three. And I just want to say that I'm, I'm pretty happy with myself um, because of the Fodalia Knights. I'm really happy to see them uh, in action. And I also hope, Tim, that in game three we get to see your land destruction plan kind of work because we haven't seen that... Uh, really do anything yet and I think that's that's a huge part of your deck so hopefully in game three we're gonna see uh, your deck reach its full potential game number three of uh, the bonus game and uh, Tim of course on the play starting with the Bayou tapping it and there she is Elves of Deep Shadow so that's a good opening here for Tim and I wonder if he can get like an Ice Storm or Sinkhole second turn and I'm have uh, I have a turn one Merfolk of the Pearl Trident here the uh, one one Merfolk Let's see if I can have a Lord of Atlantis next turn. But first, uh, let's see if Tim can find some land destruction. Or perhaps a hymn to Turek. That would be pretty bad for me as well. He is going to attack here. So going to put me on 19. And hopefully for me, just pass turn so I can cast maybe a Lord of Atlantis. Oh, there's a sinkhole. Yeah, so he's slowing me down. And passing turn. And I like uh, the way that... Uh, you know, Tim did this first attacking, offering me to trade. I didn't want to because, you know, perhaps I have a Lord in hand. Or else I would have taken the trade, I think. Anyway, attacking now with the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, putting uh, Tim here on 19. And playing an Island again, passing turn back here to Tim. There's a third, well, a third land and, of course, four mana in total. Is he going to cast an Urnum, for example? Oh, there's an Ice Storm. So now we really see that land destruction plan working out for Tim. He's really slowing me down here. And I wonder if I have more islands. There's another island. Okay, so this is my third land played out already. And yet I only have one mana to work with. And I'm not finding an unstable mutation, for example. That would have been quite nice. But an unstable on the Merfolk can just start hitting. But uh, just attacking for one and Tim on 18. I'm also on 18. There's a forest here for Tim. He's going to tap two. Are we going to see him to Turek? Oh, <laughs> there's a him. Yeah, I think now we're really seeing like Tim's deck doing what it's supposed to do. I guess the only thing he misses is like a Hypnotic Spectre or something. But yeah, this him to Turek is uh, it's pretty bad for me. So cart number five and cart number four are going to be taken out. So that's a boomerang and a phantasmal terrain. 
So those Phantasmal Terrains were pretty good for me in the, in the first two games, but now I'm going to lose at least one. I do play with a full playset, four cards in hand still. He's going to tap two more. There's a regrowth. Oh, what's he going to regrowth? The him? Or is he going to go for land destruction? He's going to go for land destruction. Let me know in the comments what you would have done. I think I would have gone for land destruction too. I think. But it's, it's a tough one because him just takes two cards out at random. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, finding a second island dares the Lord of Atlantis. I wonder how long I had that in hand. If I remember correctly, I think I actually had it in my starting hand. The Murphic of the Pearl Trident and the Lord of Atlantis. But I just couldn't get to two mana. Anyway, attacking now for two. So putting, uh, putting Tim here on 16. Passing the turn. Tim going to tap two. We're probably going to see that sinkhole. Yeah, taking care of one of the islands. Doesn't have an attack here. It's going to take a damage from his own elves of Deep Shadow. Going to tap two. Oh, he had another him in hand. That explains it. That explains it. That's why he went for land destruction instead of that him. He's going to throw the dice. I'm going to lose a control magic. Oh yeah, we actually, I remember, we had a little bit of miscommunication because obviously he said, I'm going to throw the die. Like, card one is one, two. Card two is three, four. Card three is five, six. And then that card you can keep and the rest you discard. But I didn't, I didn't get that. So anyway, this works too. It's still random. So I'm going to lose the control magic and the Mishra's factory. One card in hand and just one land. It, it's looking pretty bad for me, to be honest. The only good news here is that Tim also only has one card left in hand. So that's something at least. And he doesn't have a lot of pressure on the board. As a matter of fact, I have more pressure on the board. I can attack, look at me go here with my Merfolk army attacking for four. So Tim dropping to 11. So I mean, you know, it's still not all bad for me. Here we see him tapping two. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. Oh, he could flip on the Lord or on the island. Yeah, has to make a tough decision. I guess it would go on the Lord here since you got to think about your life total, right? So he's going to flip and it's a hit. Good flip. Yeah, going to go for the Lord. Then, of course, he could attack for one or can consider just jumping. He is going to attack here for one. So going to put me on 16. And passing the turn. Can I find an island? I'm just going to attack. I mean, I don't mind this exchange because I'm on a higher life total. So we can just do one damage each every turn. I will eventually win. Now Tim uh, playing another land. So I wouldn't say he's flooded, but he's not really finding the bigger creatures in his deck. Playing, of course, with uh, Urnum Jins. A Hypnotic Spectre would also be amazing here for Tim. Attacking for one again, putting Tim on nine. But no lands found, so just passing to turn back. Another land from the top. Yeah, he's really kind of flooded right now. He is going to attack me. He's probably also thinking, when is the moment that I'm actually going to keep my Elves of Deep Shadow on blocking duty? I, I think I would have done it now already, to be honest. But maybe he has his reasons. Going to attack you for one. Going to put uh, Tim on eight. Going to tap two. Another Lord, perhaps. Oh, a life tap. Yeah, this is really cool. So life tap is this enchantment that says any time a forest has been tapped, I gain a life. So it's, it's pretty sweet. It's a card from the sideboard, obviously. It's a card I don't play with that often. So I'm really happy that I'm able uh, to use it here in this matchup. There is a forest. So if he starts tapping the forest, I'm going to gain some life. Oh, is he going to attack again? I would really keep it on blocking duty here, Tim, because, I mean, you're on 8. And I'm on 14, so... And he is keeping it on blocking duty. That makes sense. So I'm going to draw a card for turn. Finally, another island. So really finding my islands now. Attacking with my merfolk. And now he's going to take the trade. And I'm going to tap 2 here. And there's a river merfolk. And passing the turn. Yeah, so trading is good for me because River Merfolk is a 2-1. And I mean, Tim had a really good start, but he's really missing a, a good creature here. 
Ooh, I'm going to gain a life from the life tap. Look at me go. Oh, there's a tranquility, though. That is too bad. Going to lose the life tap. And he's going to tap four. What are we going to see for four? There's an icy manipulator. So, yeah, with the icy next turn, he can start tapping down, of course, my uh, river merfolk. Putting my uh, merfolk into the red zone. Going to put uh, Tim on six. Going to tap four. Ooh, Brain Geyser for two. Yeah, that is tough for Tim. He's going to untap. There's another Elves of Deep Shadow, but now he kind of has the, has the game under control, it seems. The thing is that Tim, of course, has uh, no more cards in hand, and I have two cards still. Drawing into card number three, I think the Brain Geyser kind of helped. Finding more lands now. Going to tap two. There's a Phantasmal Terrain. Am I going to make a mountain? If I make a mountain, I can make it unblockable. Then again, he can... Oh, I'm going to give it mountain walk. So I guess I made a mountain here. Oh, that is so funny. That is so funny. Oh, there's another river merfolk. Okay, so that makes sense. Want to make those mountains. Oh, man. This is hilarious. And I mean, remember, Tim is only on six. So I just need three swings with the river merfolk to kill him. And only two swings if it can find the Lord of Atlantis. He's going to tap three, it seems. There's a nice storm. Oh, he's going to destroy his own land again. And that makes sense. I mean, having a mountain and then having two river merfolks against you, you really have to get rid of that mountain. So there's the, the pass again, untapping my river merfolks. Going to tap four. What do I have for four? Oh, control magic. This is also really good for me. I can take over the Elves of Deep Shadow so he doesn't have a blocker anymore. And then he can tap down one of the two River Merfolks, but still has to take two. He'll probably drop to, um, to four. Let's first see what's going to happen. So I'm going to declare my attack, and then, of course, Tim can uh, respond. So I say, I want to go into combat. Do you want to do anything? So he's going to tap down one of the River Merfolks. I'm going to attack with the other one. Going to put Tim here on four. Going to pass the turn back to him. So four life. Okay, there's an Urnum Jin hitting the board. So Urnum Jin, a four five. This is a Chronicles version originally from uh, Arabian Nights. But during your upkeep, you have to give Forest Walk to a creature of the opponent. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter that much because the creature you're going to give Forest Walk, you're going to tap down with the Icy. So it's not that bad. So I'm going to untap here. And I have to say, this Game 3 is really a much closer game than the other two games that we've seen. Going to tap 2 here. What do I have? More Merfolk, perhaps? Phantasmal Terrain, that could be another option. Looks like I'm a little bit in, well, not in the tank, but I, I took my time, let me put it that way, playing a Lord of Atlantis. So that means that my River Merfolks are now 3-2 creatures, which is quite good. I mean, he's on 4. I think next turn, if I attack with everything, I think that's probably the way to go. Because, I mean, he only has one blocker and he's on four. So he can, you know, for example, block one of the River Merfolks and still take six points of damage. And I think in hindsight, I actually should have attacked now with... No, 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 that wouldn't have worked because he could have just blocked the River Merfolk. No, that wouldn't have worked. I made the right decision. For a moment there, I thought, hmm, maybe I should have attacked and killed him, but I couldn't. And there we see... Uh... My uh, Elves of Deep Shadow getting uh, Forest Walk. I think I would always give Forest Walk to one of the two River Merfolks because you're going to tap those down anyway with your Icy Manipulator. And Tim has to deal with uh, one more creature. Has to play a blocker out here. Remember, he's on four. So next turn I can attack. He can tap down one creature. He can block one of the other creatures. So let's say that's the... 
uh, other river merfolk. So he taps a river merfolk, blocks a river merfolk, and then still he's going to take, well, three points of damage. He can survive, actually. So he's not dead yet, I believe. Let's, let's see what I can do. I can, of course, attack here with my, my forest walking Elsa Deep Shadow. Probably first going to say, I want to go into combat. What would you like to do? And then Tim kind of forced to block here or to tap down here a uh, River Merfolk. And now I can attack with the 1-1. One -one. And you can, you can see me think here. Just attacking with the one, knowing that I, I just cannot kill him yet. Because if I would attack with the River Merfolk and the Lord, he's probably going to block the River Merfolk. Only taking three, going to go down to one. And now I think next turn I can kill him. Playing a uh, Eben Stronghold here, by the way. I, uh, I looked up the name of the card. It's Eben Stronghold. Beautiful art. I love all those, those lands in Fallen Empires in general, by the way. The storage lands are also amazing. Just the art in, in, in Fallen Empires is just is epic. So good. Anyway, uh, finding... Oh, look at this. Unstable mutation. I won't say finding an island, but I was tapping an island and uh, putting an unstable mutation on my Elves of Deep Shadow. And now he's going to tap it down and I'm just going to attack with everything else. Yeah, there's nothing that Tim can do here, I think. Yeah, no cards in hand as well. So just going to tap one of the merfolks, take the damage, and uh, that's the end of the bonus game. Look at that, two counter spells in hand as well. So there was really uh, nothing here to do for Tim. Even if he had an answer, his hand was empty, of course, but even if he would have had an answer, I could have counter, uh, countered it away. So yeah, this um, this was it. I hope you've uh, you've enjoyed the match. I have to say, I'm pretty surprised. Uh, about how well my deck is doing. Of course, Mono Blue Merfolk is is good. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, usually it's it's not that special, but it's working really well at least in this matchup. So that's really nice to see. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're uh, if you enjoyed this match, if you like Merfolk, or if you more if you are more a, a green a black player. Would love to hear from you. And uh, before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one other thing that you can do to support the show, and that is become a patron of the show, just like Tim. Uh, and you can become a patron of the show by visiting patreon.com slash timmytalks. And there you can find out how you can become a supporter. It already starts for just $1 a month. And if you become a sponsor at the $2 uh, tier level, your name will also be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Zing!